Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and I titled this video My Battle Against My Nerves and uh, it is about as dramatic as I make it sound. I feel like my whole life I've been a person wrestling nervousness and anxiety and in that sense uh, I've kind of uh, gone to feel like I'm kind of like uh, Finding Nemo growing up in a pressure cooker because uh, inside there is so much uh, anxiety and so many nerves but outside I present this uh, outward energy of calm and peace and harmony and that's so interesting you know that contrast between the storm inside uh, the pressure and the stress and the outward calm and composure I think that's uh, a pretty interesting image of myself now First, I want to give you some uh, updates from my life because uh, I just passed my driver's theory. And yeah, so I've been going for my driver's theory, I'm working, I'm uh, caught up, uh, distracted by world events. I spend uh, basically every hour checking on the latest count on the US elections, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Nevada. Uh, what's up Nevada? Nothing's happening. What are you doing? Anyways, uh, I'm doing all these things. Uh, even though I don't even live in the US and that's so interesting you know I was uh, just finished with my uh, driver's theory test and I go out and I hear a lady outside at one of the examinators she's singing born in the USA and I'm like yeah, I told her that it feels like that doesn't it uh, it feels like we're here in the Netherlands and we are born in the USA it's like we are living in the USA because when we wake up we wake up the US news you know every day it's like no matter what we do it's always about the US and so I think uh, we can feel in Europe as if the fate of uh, uh, European and world politics rests on who wins the election uh, in the US uh, and so yeah that's quite an interesting image you know um, because it's not just the Americans that have to live with the choices that are done in the US but it's also the rest of the world that has to adapt to it anyways you know while I was preparing for the driver's exam and uh, studying for it I kept saying to my girlfriend that yeah I am really bad with tests I do really bad with tests I'm not very good at it and uh, nobody believes me when I say it and I like always like it but I, I, I thought that you were quite good with theory and I say yeah, I'm good with theory but I'm not good with details so I'm good with theory but I'm not good with details I'm so afraid that I read a question wrong that I missed something that I forgot about something that I uh, didn't prepare for something or didn't study something or there was a chapter that I missed in the book so yeah that really baffles me you know also with tests uh, uh, one weakness that I've always had my entire life is that I never answer the question so when I get a question on an exam I start talking about it in such a broad light so a question about what they wore in the Viking age becomes a question on uh, it becomes an answer on Viking lifestyle <laughs> overall and uh, then I just fail the question because I didn't answer the question itself or I start overthinking it or I start doubting or second guessing it you know because I'm not just at the moment uh, 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 taking a driver's theory but I'm also taking lessons so I'm also on the road I've had about 12 lessons now or one lesson of two hours so times 12 so uh, basically uh, sorry one lesson times six six lessons times two hours basically anyways uh, I'm on the roads now and the teacher he says okay Eric so we're gonna turn left uh, in the next crossing so now I want you to prepare for this turn so basically he's telling me you you have to prepare for it you have to put yourself in the right gear you have to uh, choose how to sort on the road or which position to take and you have to choose when to signal and all those things you know so uh, when that happens I'm already in a good position I already am in the right gear uh, but when he says that I start panicking I'm like wait a second am I not in the right gear am I not uh, in the right position do I need to turn here do I need to go right and uh, that's uh, uh, such a fail uh, I um, start second-guessing myself so easily now even though I'm such a bundle of nerves I've always found myself pursuing you know these uh, 
highly intense situation. So uh, for those of you who don't know, I've been in politics and I've been a lot on stage. And uh, before I go into those situations, I have to constantly contain myself. So what I do is I do all these breathing exercises, I pursue, I, I, before I go on stage or have a presentation, I go by myself, I make sure nobody will disturb me, turn off my phone, and I just sit, I just breathe, and I just clear my head, and I just keep doing that until it's time, basically. And uh, after I'm done, it's like such a wash, like it feels like uh, so, all the weight lifting of your shoulder, that feeling is so amazing, you know, when you, uh, that feeling of relief when you're done with something, the feeling of relief I had today when I passed my driver's theory, you know. Uh, and uh, the feeling of relief when you're getting off stage, when you're done holding a speech and people are applauding, applauding you know. Uh, or when you see the smile on people's face and it's like, yes, I said something good. <laughs> or people are starting to resonate with what I say. Um, so that's such a relief, but it's also like I'm coming down from... Uh, you know, having run a marathon, you know, after that I need like uh, uh, two days to rest and recuperate because it was such an intense experience. Uh, it was so uh, scary, so exhausting, so, uh, I don't know, intense that I just want to crawl back into my shell and uh, put myself down with my blankie and uh, pour myself a cup of tea and go in bath and just gushfraba, gushfraba, gushfraba. Uh, so those exercises, you know, the breathing exercises, the listening to uh, lo-fi hip hop, uh, meditation music, you know, uh, just cooling down, just uh, uh, making sure that my thoughts don't become restless, you know, that has become really an integral part of my lifestyle and how I stay healthy and how I still stay in good shape because I've noticed if I don't do those things, you know, uh, I um, uh, can... Uh, overwhelm myself very easily, I become frazzled, I uh, start acting in panic, you know, I think uh, my girlfriend and people close to me have seen many times, you know, when I become stressed, how I can start acting recklessly, I go like into a frenzy where I'm just running around or I kind of like uh, don't even think anymore and I don't know what I'm doing and I'm just uh, acting on instinct and I'm doing all these kind of stupid things, you know, because I'm not even thinking about where I'm going because uh, I'm so overwhelmed by the situation. So um, that's become, uh, yeah, a, a problem for me is making sure that I don't overwhelm and make sure that I stay calm. So that phase of outward calm has become uh, uh, more or less my protective mechanism and how I uh, stay, stay calm, stay in a good spirit. Uh, because as long as I can stay calm on the outside, I know that the nerves and the feelings and the anxiety that I have on the inside is not going to hurt me, basically. That I know that that's just information, that's just a feeling, that's just an emotion. So uh, that's not going to affect my judgment. I'm still going to make a good decision. I'm still going to make sure that I answer correctly. I'm still going to make sure I don't rush it. And that's uh, been my lifesaver, you know, because um, even before taking this exam today, before I click start, I sit down and I just breathe in, I just breathe out and I do that for 10 seconds just to make sure that I go in with a sane mind, a healthy spirit and just uh, in a calm manner and that's uh, I think uh, the HSP, the highly sensitive person survival guide. Uh, basically, if you are a highly sensitive person, if you get easily frazzled and if you find yourself nervous or anxious a lot of the time. Uh, you need those uh, techniques uh, to get by and you need to just remember those things. And, you know, I think most people do those things naturally. I think non-HSPs and other people, they have these, uh, they, they practice these things naturally. They are already breathing in a calm and relaxed way. They already are um, sitting with a calm posture and with relaxed shoulders. I uh, think uh, people that are highly sensitive, they don't have that naturally, you know, They're, they are sitting tensely already, they are already squeezing their <laughs> fingers, you know, uh, my driving teacher, he's always saying, stop squeezing the wheel, <laughs> you know, and that's, uh, um, uh, like, I'm constantly, I constantly have to remind myself to relax my fingers, I have to remind myself to sit in a relaxed position, I have to remind myself to breathe, uh, because it's like, otherwise I don't do it, and, uh, I don't know. Um, 
some say that highly sensitive people ultimately what the, they have that other people don't have is the, a more sensitive nervous system that is more easily overwhelmed so basically uh, they react more intensely to everyday stimuli you know I uh, if people criticize me I tense up faster you know if a normal person is criticized they still stay calm and they still stay relaxed and they say oh you think that about me I don't care what you think about me but a highly sensitive person they're like you don't like me <laughs> and they tense up and they become go into a guarded position and they become more defensive and they become more uh, uh, anxious so they start uh, going into a negative spiral they start criticizing themselves they internalize you know they have all these reactions that are a lot more intense you know they uh than what the normal person would do and that goes into physical and emotional and mental practices uh, there is a reason why i obsessively scan the media and read so many different news sources to keep track of the election uh, there's a reason why when COVID was starting that I was so excessively uh, reading up every single article I could find on COVID and the spread and where it was and where it was coming and what was going to happen because I was trying to prepare myself. I was trying to uh, steel myself, brace myself for what was going to happen. You know, I tried to predict the future and what's going to happen next because it gives me a sense of calm and clarity and control. If I can predict the future, no matter how awful it would be or how great it is, I can stay calm and I can stay controlled and I can stay focused and I can prepare how I move and how I act so that I can maintain a feeling of inner peace and harmony because ultimately I follow basic Taoist principles. You know, the basic principle of Tao is um, just to go with the flow or follow the stream of the river or to uh, not resist, you know, what is happening because if you know something bad is happening, uh, you also know that the resistance is pointless. You, if you know that the rock is going to come crashing down, there is no point in trying to uh, push that rock back up or to uh, uh, prevent that from happening. It's far better to move out of the way and to find another way forward. And uh, that doesn't mean giving up to hardship or negativity or to accepting uh, bad practice. It, it's, it means finding another way forward. So if worst comes to worst, what can I do to make things better from there? What can I do to change my situation and improve from that position, knowing this? How can I, where can I go, or what, can I, what decisions can I make, what goals can I set that will put me in a good position if worst comes to worst? So yeah, um, I have been battling nerves all my life, so far successively. <laughs> Uh, luckily, I'm still on YouTube, I'm still uh, moving forward, I still passed my driver's exam, I'm still making progress at work, I'm still living life and thriving and staying healthy and uh, I do feel that uh, my nerves have relaxed in later years. I know that it was a lot worse when I was a teenager. I remember being a teenager, sometimes I could be just shivering from the stress and from the nerves and from the anxiety and I could go into this really bad next negative spiral. But I know that today I don't do that. I know that uh, uh, my, you know, you're less hormonal when you get older, you're uh, more developed, you're more in control, you're more uh, you're better at setting boundaries for yourself. So if you're young and you hear this or if you have these struggles, know that it is going to get better. You're going to keep improving these strategies. You're going to uh, keep finding better ways to live and you're going to find uh, ways to stay healthy and to maintain your boundaries. And yeah, you're going to be good. Trust me. So anyways, thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.